Hi everybody, welcome back to Brick Model Railroad on YouTube. Now with better audio quality, I'm Glenn Holland. I'm also Glenn Holland. <laughs> you did the thing. <laughs> He's Kale. And so today... I'm Kale. Today we've got uh, more premium instructions, uh, another review video for your enjoyment. This time we are covering the Thrall 61 foot 1 inch bulkhead flat car, which I finally designed another BMR model. It's uh, been a long time coming, so we could have released these a little while ago, but we chose not to because we're going to be doing a dual release uh, this coming month in January, if all goes according to plan, which it should. We're doing a double Pacific, your pleasure, double your fun. Pacific Car and Foundry 50-foot insulated box car, of which we have three models sitting on the desk right now. Now, these are a little out of scale. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is actually an HO model. I don't have the... Uh... Yeah, we um, haven't built our prototype yet, but we've got it pretty much almost completely designed. But yeah. we're working on, well, Kale is mostly working on that. You know, that's on the way. And we wanted to do a dual <clears throat> release uh, just because they work really well together, um, given the mm -hmm. era that they uh, came about in. And they feature a really cool new product that we'll have, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, I guess we'll go into the bulkhead flat cars now. Yeah. So. A bulkhead flat car is basically a flat car with bulkheads on it, obviously. So, um, if you're not familiar, this uh, triangular portions on the end of the car are bulkheads, which are basically just serve the purpose of any uh, bulk load that you would be putting on this car, just so it doesn't shift forwards or backwards, you know, during transit. It pretty much, pretty much, just you know, general purpose cars beyond that. Yeah. So you know, you'd find a lot of bulk commodities <clears throat> like wrapped lumber or, you know, steel pipes or wood pulp, mm -hmm. a lot of different stuff. Um, sometimes they would actually have like stakes or, um, yeah, that's what stakes along the sides to help contain things as well. Mm -hmm. So pretty, pretty, uh, generic car, but, uh, didn't come without its challenges. Obviously it's a very, <laughs> there's not a lot to this car really. Um, you know, it's, a flat car with bulkheads on it, but you know that means that there's not a lot of room to work with on a lot of things. So I had to get pretty creative with a lot of the techniques that I used. But um, yeah. I think one I, of the one of the challenges is that it's a long car. But it's, it's very also, long. Yeah. It's also a flat car, so it doesn't have a very it doesn't have a body to give it very much structure. Right. So getting it to getting it strong enough to support, you know, a, a lumber load. A lumber load, for instance. Right. You know, so you had, to, you had to build a pretty rigid frame and yeah, but you into can, it. You can. No, you can't do that. <laughs> you didn't connect that right. That's why. <laughs> you can support the car by the bulkheads. When it's know. built properly. When it's built properly, <laughs> you, can, you can support it by the bulkheads. So that's you know, the bulkhead flat car equivalent of the milk jug test. Milk jug test is Lego train history, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I used a lot of. I used a lot of plates, and they're obviously on the underside of the car to keep it and pretty brackets. rigid. And brackets, yes, and brackets to keep the side uh, the side sills on. Um, and you know, the bulkheads are just kind of snotted into the sides, so you know it's obviously, like I said, there's not a lot of room to work with. But you know, the details still in there. Um, this is my personal car now, um, so I got the <laughs> prototype number two. Exactly. I got the, obviously the ladders, that was a really hard challenge to overcome because, you know, I have to keep it uh, sloped with the bulk, uh, the uh, triangular part of the bulkhead and have, be able to put uh, rungs on it. So that was crazy, but you know, pretty simple solution. It works. Um, ladders are just yeah, hard. They're just hard. They're just hard to do. So um, um, there's not a lot, of, a lot of options to do nice fine detail ladders yeah. in Lego. Yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> but the other thing that um, I found as I was researching this car is, is that um, generally they had a closed uh, center rib on the bulkheads, whereas some of them had an open center rib. So we've demonstrated that on yeah. the box cover too. This is the closed one, and then the open one is like on the, on the, uh, the brown car here. Um, you can kind of see yeah, that. Yeah. We will be, I'll, you know, we'll show these details off at a later part of the video. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we do include instructions to build both versions. So depending on 
the car that you want to build, you can make it more accurate. And so, you know, that was a nice detail to include. I also, on the side sills, I included the, um, the jacking pads, which are the triangular parts here. So that's basically where you would lift up the car, you know, if you were doing any maintenance work on it or needed to pull a truck off for some and reason, I included least, those. And at least one of the decal sets we did it for, does actually uh, for one of the cars includes uh instructions for jacking there you go <laughs> jack here yep <laughs> so i included that um then the all the stake pockets are represented by one by one tiles and then the tie downs are represented by the one by twos um that actually brings up another good point so one of the uh one of the alternate builds uh that you can do for this utilize the new one by one by three with two stud uh plate modified which is like a double yeah. jumper so all of the one by twos are held on pretty much by those. And then so if the car that you're building um, in whatever color that it is, has those one by one by three with two studs yeah. available in that color, you can use them. For example, the brown car does not have them. Yeah, so, so you know, these, it's a, can, these can get, yeah. I mean, they stay pretty well. They do. Um, but if you pick it up by the sides, you can bump yeah. them out of place. But if you, if they you, go back easy though. Yeah, if you have the one by threes available, it's a lot. It's it doesn't. It's, you don't uh, have to have that. You problem. don't have to have that problem, and it's a really simple, um, really simple change in the instructions which we included. So beyond this, we've modeled a wrapped lumber load to go on top of the car, and instructions on how to build that and secure it to the car. It's not very secured to the car, but it will, just, you know, as long as it's just on it's, the, on your yeah, layout, it, it's, it won't go anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere when you're running it. No, um, I'm sure we won't. It's know, studded in there we didn't, in, in a couple places. We didn't feel we had to, like, go overboard with no, we weren't, <clears throat> studying we weren't gonna, in every single crate. Um, no, we weren't going to worry about that, but it's... Basically just a repeated, you know, four by eight design and then you can, you know, build them or you can, you know, do your own thing and then have less of them on there or something like that. Yeah, you can reconfigure them if and, you want um, to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's there's your starting point and we have decals for them as well, which we'll have mm -hmm. available separately. Um, I think that's all the, the features on it. So, oh wait, one more thing. Um, as it's built in the instructions, as you're seeing here, it actually won't go around R40 curves. But we are including instructions on how to modify the car so that you can if you would like to. Yeah. It's a very long car, obviously, as we mentioned, and it sits very low on the trucks. Um, the side sills are really, yeah. really low. So I wanted to I wanted to, you know, capture that look um, while I was designing it. But, you know, if, if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of that and, you know, you, you might not mind like I might, um, we are including instructions to how to modify yeah. the car so that you can use it on a, a much tighter curves. I think too. as as built, what the minimum the minimum radius was R seventy eight seventy two eighty eight. Our we tested it on eighty eight. We haven't tried seventy two. Oh, so it will work right. on eighty eight. <laughs> it it might work on seventy two, but 72. you have instructions to modify it anyways. I can swear we did seventy two, but maybe not. I don't have seventy um, twos. Oh, okay. It was eighty eight. It was eighty eight. <laughs> um. But the yeah, like you said, we there is a modification you can make that'll it'll raise the car up one plate mm -hmm. uh, on and the trucks. You but change it'll, the ladder design. And but at that point you'll be able to go through R forties no problem. No problem. So that basically takes care of all the features, I think. So we can talk about decals now. So decals. I think we're doing what, nine decals is it? One, two, three, eight four. Eight five, different six, cars, six, four seven. different lumber loads. Yep. No, it's more than eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, well, the, eight, southern, seven, eight, the Southern Pacific Cotton Belt car is oh, yeah, one they're, sheet. They're on one sheet, so yeah. you can change them as you need. So we can go through those. Now I'm going to do the uh, the lumber load decals last. So <laughs> starting off for the yellow cars, we have... There's the other two yellow cars, and we'll do them. Um, starting off for the yellow cars, we have Oregon Pacific and Eastern and Illinois uh, Terminal. Oregon Pacific and Eastern. As far as I can... As far as I have found... The Oregon Pacific and Eastern actually got the cars from Illinois Terminal, and this is actually evidenced by um, where they painted over the reporting marks and the car numbers. There is actually a slightly different shade of yellow paint, and which we, we have included. Which, which in we, have the included. Decal. <laughs> we included that in the decals, so we, um, you know we're being that accurate. But it's, uh, it's what they call a patch job in right. the railroad industry. It's where they you know patch over. Uh, old reporting marks when the car mm -hmm. changes hands. Nothing else. Is, <clears throat> nothing else has changed though. But we are gonna 
are we were we gonna sell these separately? Yes. Yes, we are selling yeah, those them separately. Are gonna be separate because there's enough. Difference. Yeah, there's enough different, but they're you know they're very they're very similar. So um, that's uh, that's those and two. It should be mentioned that the the O P and E, the Oregon Pacific and Eastern car, was the original inspiration for this model. It was. Model. You'll read about that in the introduction of the uh, of the book. Um, we also have for a yellow car. Um, uh, TTX car and Union Pacific. So, um, a lot of the information that I got on the cars <clears> were from <throat> uh, a very comprehensive TTX book, and uh, we also found some good pictures of a Union Pacific one, so we felt we could include both of those. Yeah. Um, moving on, we have for a blue and black car, Golden West Service and Western Pacific, respectively, <clears> which is, uh, those are really nice. It should be noted, though, that on the blue car, you can't quite model the ladders on the ends in blue, but we've um, just included um, yeah. black elements. Just you can, yeah, you can sub in black and it doesn't look too bad. Right. So, you know, it, it's just one of those <laughs> things, like, we couldn't... We wanted to do the Golden West service because it's a nice, interesting car, but we can't do the ladders. So yeah. you know, you have to make you a know, substitution we're somewhere. Trying to do our best to, you mm -hmm. know, have a, have a variety of color. Right, <laughs> and also on the Western Pacific car, it has the uh, the Thrall car logo on there, so that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. <laughs> that was a nice. Kel found that Details. the other day and put Details. that on there. Um, last three for reddish brown, we have Southern Pacific slash Cotton Belt. Those will be on the same decal sheet. Yeah, so, the uh, Southern Pacific. Southern Pacific. The Cotton Belt was owned by the Southern Pacific, so mm -hmm. um, pretty much the graphics are the same except for the reporting marks right. and the num car number. And that also so. has the Thrall car logo on there too. Yes, and, and then also had the feature of the Thrall car logo. Yep, and then the last one is CP Rail in, uh, in red. That is also the other one that you can't model the ladder in the body color, so it's, we just substituted black parts. <clears throat> you know, you can change that if you, if you would like, yeah. but you can model it in reddish brown or mm -hmm. yellow completely, so, and black, obviously. And black. <laughs> so, those are the, those are the uh, nine different railroads, eight different and sets white, that we have. And white, but we don't have decal yeah. sets for a white We will, car. though. We will, though, at some point. Um, so, th we have... Yeah, there's a, there's a car we could do in white. Mm -hmm. So we have eight decal sets Two from right. nine different railroads. And then for a wrapped lumber load, we're, in, we're not including, but we'll have these available separately. So we included um, decals for four different lumber companies that would be fairly appropriate that you would find, that you could find on one of these cars. <clears throat> so in uh, going from top to bottom here, we have Bohemia Inc. We have, what was this other one? Can Cana for? Canadian Forest Products. Canadian Forest Products. And we have uh, Weyerhaeuser and Georgia Pacific. So yeah. all of those will be available so separately. The, so um, if you want to build the wrapped yeah. lumber load, you the can have The Bohemia is, for, is probably late 70s, early 80s-ish. Yeah. Um, Georgia Pacific is obviously still around. <clears throat> and also Weyerhaeuser. Weyerhaeuser, yeah. And I'm not I sure about Canadian Canada. Forest Products is still around. Mm -hmm. But the the wrapped load uh, that I depicted is probably, probably 80s-ish. Yeah. So... If you're wanting to build a wrapped lumber load for your bulkhead flat car, we'll have these available separately on our store for you to add into your <clears throat> cart as you're ordering the bulkhead flat car. Yes. We were originally planning to include um, a set of these in each kit, but we found that we were able to include more dif uh, a number of different companies to put to, yeah. to decal the give load you, for. So we wanted give to give you some variety and yeah. also, you know. <laughs> There's, you know, you have options there. You could have an You might not want to model a lumber load, so you exactly. know, why sell you the decals when you don't need them? Right. So that takes care of all the decals then. Make sure I put, um, edit in the, these on the screen so it just has people don't have to squint at them. Um, yeah. But so obviously this is our box. So the last thing that I guess we need to talk about is the, uh, the new product that we're including in the kits. So, Pretty one of the cool. it is one of the things that uh, I have been working on uh, driving to completion is the it's a basically a printed one by one round tile with a, a roller bearing pattern on it, and so these are printed by our friends at CRR Studios um, exclusively for us, and so we've actually come up with this we've got this nice uh, packaging for it. So uh, we'll be including eight of these per box. So you can build eight tiles, eight tiles per box, um, which is enough for one one car, obviously. And then we'll actually have these available separately on our store. And we've got it. We've got quite a lot of them, so you know that we'll have them pro probably for a little while. And the same thing goes for the um, 
And we'll print more if we have. And we will. <laughs> the same thing goes for the um, <clears throat> the box car that we're going to come out with as well. They also yes. had roller bearings, and so we we're going to include those in those kits as well, and obviously keep them available on our store when we and when we know, do our dual. It's release. just cool to see them like roll. Yeah, spinning so there's, as you there's as, a way as the car moves down the track. Yeah, the instructions in this <laughs> in both of those kits will include well. They had. They are. They explain how to build these trucks so that you can include these in them, and mm -hmm. then you'll have the instructions if you want to build some, you know, gener generally more modern cars and you know transition era like we've been doing. You can, you know, take more of these and, you know, add that nice, really nerdy detail in, because why wouldn't you want to do that? We're all about the details. We are. So <laughs> that's pretty much everything. So we are doing a dual release with these. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we'll go over the date and a later point. Be sure and check out the article that we have on BrickModelRailroad.com for the complete information on uh, on when these will be available and um, all the other cool stuff that we're doing. Because we have, you know, we've got a lot of plans coming up for 2019. So, you know, pretty exciting Some stuff. Some of them you may have seen by the time this video comes yeah, out. Probably. <laughs> pretty exciting stuff, though. So. Alright, so now we're going to go over some of the details that we talked about earlier. Kale is currently playing the role of cameraman. So, um, the first detail that we're going to show you, show off is the uh, the differences in the center braces on the ends of the car. Uh, the reddish brown one here shows the open center brace, which is uh, two symmetrical braces um, on the ends of the car. Um, and as opposed to the single center brace on the yellow car over on the right. So as I was researching this car, as I'm, I believe I mentioned, I found that uh, there were these. This was one of the main differences in the in the um, in the bulkheads that I found. So uh, we included instructions for you to be able to model uh, either one on your cars. So um, if you wanted to build a second car and have uh, a you know a little bit of difference in them, you know you're able to do that. And so um, obviously we've included the details on the under, underneath the car. Um, including so you know the center sill, the uh, air tanks, the brake, uh, the brake piping. Of course, you know we're all about the details here. So um, speaking of details, we'll go. Uh, you can show off the bearings, uh, the bearing tiles now. So um, as I said, we're including eight eight tiles per per kit. You can the instructions tell you how to build them onto the ends of your wheels, and they roll really well. And as I mentioned, we'll have these available separately on our website. And this is how uh, this is how uh, they'll look when you get them. We have a really nice, neat little package to put them in. So um, this is what you get if you buy them separately. And then uh, you can see on the back that uh, we have the example of the real bearing that we modeled them after, as well as the design that's printed on them. So um, and hopefully at some point we'll have um, different bearing types available. Um, printed on more tiles. So if you wanted to get really crazy with details, we can um, you can you're able to do that and model different cars with different bearings on on the trucks. So that'll be available hopefully at some point. But for now, uh, we just have uh, the one design. Um, then now I'm going to go over the decals. Last but not least, so you can actually see them. So there's OP&E and Illinois Terminal. Um, as we mentioned, OP&E. As far as I've been able to find, uh, OP&E got the cars from Illinois Terminal. And painted over the reporting marks. So that's those two. Then we have TTX and Union Pacific. Two other, obviously, if you model modern era stuff, you you'll know what TTX is. And Union Pacific is obviously still around too. <laughs> um, Golden West Service and, Union, and Western Pacific for blue and black cars, respectively. Finally, are able to model another blue car. It gives you nice color to your trains. Cotton Belt and South, uh, Southern Pacific will be included on the same decal sheet because they're almost identical. And then CP Rail in red on the bottom. So it's uh, eight, uh, nine different railroads with eight different decal sheets. And then last, and then there's the uh, the lumber product sheet. So Bohemia Incorporated, Canadian Forest Products, Weyerhaeuser, and Georgia Pacific from top to bottom. Awesome. So that takes care of the video, guys. Uh, be sure to check out the other video that we'll be posting. We'll have to record it later than right now, obviously, but um, we'll be posting another video on the uh, Pacific Car and Foundry 50-foot insulated boxcar. 
at some point, be sure and check that out. And be sure and uh, like, comment, and subscribe for more uh, awesome videos from Brick Model Reorder. Uh, product reviews, you know, we'll post other from other conventions that we go to and other cool stuff as well. Um, so be sure to check us out on our website at brickmodelreorder.com. Um, other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll talk to you all later.